Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet where every single host will be replaced by Wario, who is fully voice acted next week. I'm your host, Will. Joining me today, Brandon. Are we getting Charles Martinet himself to do, do this? Three individual clones of Charles Martinet and him in the room. Uh, Seth. I'm Rosie. I like being Wario. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I Smooth spoke out of what? order there. I'm sorry, Seth. I didn't. He, he stepped on your entrance. I'm sorry. Uh, and Noah. Is Charles Martinet really the guy that does Wario? Yeah, he does all the Wario, the Marios. He does Mario, Luigi, Lu- Wario, and Waluigi, baby. It's all that one one man. Wow. What a talented soul he is. Does he but do You actually is. sound serious. Uh, you, you know, wait, you're being sarcastic, right? No, he does yeah, all he the really Marios. Do all. No, 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 no. He does no, all no. of them. No, Noah's question. Because he I actually didn't know genuine... they did Wario because Wario's voice has changed over the years. Like Mario German... Party sounded different yeah. to what he is now. Though I missed Wario was not Charles Martinet, but later on they made the decision to have him do all the Mario yeah. Bros. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, d- though I missed sense. was some just some guy, some <laughs> guy that that worked at Nintendo. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I missed. <laughs> no. Uh, it became a minor meme status, and that guy did, so good for him. Uh, speaking of minor meme status, how are we all doing this week? I'm doing as good as, uh, a dead good. meme. Oh, boy. Just, just a deep, deep, you know what, I mean, it was, it was July 4th weekend for those of you in the United States. Sorry, Saf. And Moose was flying home from New Hampshire as he was at last week. He died in transit. Just got sent to some deserted island in some tropical climate, and he's forever trapped on that island for the next two to three years. So, you know, we'll continue on without him on this podcast, which is fine. Uh, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed the July Fourth weekend. You know what I did with it? Because it was hot outside. It oh. was hot. There was a, there was a heat oh, wave hitting awful. the United States this mm-hmm. week. I stayed inside it and I played video awful. games a fair amount. That's what that's part of what I did. It's not a bad thing to do. Uh, See. We we were hosting yeah. Muzzy here, so we we were out doing stuff, showing him around New Hampshire. But god damn, was it hot as balls! It was. And like you don't think about. I mean, here's a question. Well, before because we don't have any huge rush or anything this week. Uh, in New Hampshire, is it prepared for like hot weather? Like, are your houses designed with air conditioning and stuff in mind, or is it like if, if the heat wave comes, you're just not? Well, prepped? I mean, we have air conditioners just not built into the houses. We because we're it's so cold in the winter. We we have the like we put the air conditioners in the windows and then we take them out. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, that's, like, what happens with a lot of places where it's, like, colder in the yeah. winter, right? It's just, like, when the heat wave comes, you're just like, oh, boy, this is this is almost as bad because I just don't have the equipment for it. I, I, you, can you tell my dad works in air conditioning? This is why I have <laughs> these things. Uh, <laughs> but I played video games this week. Did any of you enjoy any video games Always. this week? No, Always. Forever and ever. Tennis and Rumbo. Tennis and Rumbo, baby. I mean, that was the thing, is that you had time to play video games this week, because, I mean, I said it before, I said it multiple times, but it was, sometimes, you know, I'll look at other podcasts, sort of, like, descriptions to sort of see what they're covering, to see if we're going to miss any huge story that I might just not notice. Uh, all of the podcast descriptions that I follow are all like, hey guys, slow news week, so we're getting a little crazy this week, and I'm like, oh, welcome <laughs> to the club, welcome to where we've been the last two weeks, all you other podcasts, you finally caught up. But you know what? I said it before, E3's happened, you know, a lot of, we're, we are looking down the barrel once September hits, we're getting games every week, you know, like there's just, there's not going to be enough to keep track, people are going to be talking about Spider-Man when I'm trying to make a case for Dragon Quest XI, people are going to be talking about <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 the same day the My Hero Academia game is coming out, what insane people the My Hero Academia people are for doing it on the same day as Red Dead Redemption 2, but I admire their bravery. The World Dead uh, Redemption remix is coming out. Yes, there's just there's a whole lot happening. Let's talk though about the games because we don't want to look too far in the future. We want to look at the here and now, you know, appreciate the moment we have in front of us. Sure. And when I was talking to the guys, we've been playing a fair number of games that I think are worth talking about. So first and foremost, I mean, what's Noah mentioned it right there earlier. Up, we're doing we're Mario Tennis Aces. This is the thing all of us have been playing, but we're going to be doing a game club yeah. on that. So we'll sort of save a lot of the brain of that discussion for there. But we've also been playing. 
a game that we've hotly anticipated in this small group of people. <laughs> there, there was there was a wait for it. Runbo. Yeah. Runbo. Yeah. Noah, can, for the for the uh, uneducated viewer listener, can you tell them what Runbo is? Runbo is like an indie. I guess racing game would be the best way to describe shit. Where sure. you don't use cars or anything. You have to run from one end to the stage to the from left to right or right to left, depending the stage. And you have to get to the trophy first. Mm -hmm. Meantime, there are four up to uh, actually up to nine other, well, actually up to eight other players, yeah. nine altogether. Yes, that can are racing at the same time, try to get the trophy, the same trophy you're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. So you can punch. You can kick, you can use items to screw them over. In the meantime, it's also a platformer. Yes. And the background is constantly changing colors. And it, while it's changing colors, it can also take out some platforms yeah. that are the same color. So it's like a level is constantly changing shape in a sense. Yeah. So you have to like be on your toes constantly. It's really fun and fast paced. Yeah, just a couple of additions. Like it's a it's a racing platformer game, and the controls are very very simple, but they have like the Smash Brothers style to them. So um, there's the jump button and there's the attack button. But if you double tap attack, you can do a dash attack. If you hit up, you do like a fucking Smash Brothers style up B move, like an uppercut. Yeah, yeah. where it's like gives you an extra jump. So it's. It's simple yet complex. It's got one of those. It's one of those neat little games that you expect to play on like mobile devices. You know, it's simple yeah. enough a to get into. A similar game to like yeah, yeah but complex to... and in depth enough to actually just get stuck in there and just fucking go at it. Yeah, a simple game to compare to would be yes. Speedrunners yeah. if yeah. you're familiar. Yes, with that. yes, it is. Yeah. Speedrunners is more focused, like 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 the name sort of implies, on like going the fastest you can, and like there is ways to go faster in Runbo, but it's it is more about direct screwing yourself over a whole lot, you know, like because you have the punch at all times. Like if you hit someone else in the air, they get knocked down, so like it get, it can be very hard for them to either, yeah. you know, speed recover run outright, or if they do if they do recover, they'll be quite a way behind. Yeah, speedrunners yeah. focused about outrunning your opponents, whereas Runbo is just beating the shit out of your opponents until you get the fucking trophy. Uh, that and surviving the stage. Yeah. Because there is there is an arena mode as well. So, like, so there's the capacity for both, right? Like, there's mm. the capacity for, like, a competitive platformer where you're jumping and trying to vie for that final rush for the trophy. But then there's also the, just like a King of the Hill type mode where you're straight up gathering power-ups, trying to, you know, eat, stay alive till the very end. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saf, you mentioned that you've been playing the single player content of this game. How yeah. does that work? So the single player content is basically the same premise. It they don't have an online component for it, unfortunately, but it is still you can play it by yourself or you can play it cooperative, lo cooperatively uh, with friends. Up to uh, nine players could be playing that game, and it's just basically doing these same levels again but trying to make sure that you reach the trophy and uh, basically the better the time is the more medals you get as a result of it it's they have the there's got a few modes where it's like they have um the story mode the main mode where it's like there's the evil villainous satora i believe that's what her name is and you have to beat them because they're uh, she's ruining the party funk and there's also the behemoth mode, which is the challenging mode. I remember I played it on the Wii U version once, and oh my god, it was that a very, very, very tough mode to beat. I haven't beaten it. There's no saves in that mode. I started it, and they're like, hey man, you gotta do this all in one run, basically. Don't, don't turn off your game if you don't plan on restarting. Yeah, there's no saves in it. There's achievements if you beat it without dying a number of times. And there's also uh, achievement if you beat it within 20 minutes. And I don't know how you would be able to beat it within 20 minutes. You need a lot of fucking time playing that game to do so. But, um, um, yeah, those are the two modes that are there. And they're all very in-depth. Like, there's also DLC, which I haven't actually touched yet. Uh, but they're all very in-depth and they're all very expansive. There's, like, a lot of variety in those uh, modes. And there's a lot of 
great creative little ideas that you don't get to see in the multiplayer, which is worth exploring in itself. Um, there's also different challenges to this as well as the way it's designed. It's designed in a grid base type system, where it's like there's green, uh, there's green levels, there's yellow levels, and there's red levels, and it the challenge varies depending upon what color it is. Green being the easiest, red being the hardest, and it's unique in that sense. Where it's like you can either go around and beat that arena by going through the easy levels, or you can take a more direct route and just do all the harder levels and try and win the game that way. The game is so you're saying that there's different paths that you can go to to get to the end, and like there's fewer if you do the harder levels versus doing the easier ones. Yeah, like if you just go the direct route, you can. You will get through some oh, okay. challenging ones, but um, it that will be the ones that are blocking your way. But you can snake your way across and just do the easier ones, and but it will be longer. Um, it's it's quite fun that way, and it's quite interesting. I just went through the direct route, just trying to get to the end, but I'm kind of wanting to just beat every single level I can. It's quite mm-hmm. in depth. There is a couple issues with the like this game is a straight port. Of the Wii U version. Yeah, I mean, it's a straight-up port, and it's like a... I mean, I was going to get to this. It's like... It runs worse at certain parts in the yes, Wii U version. Yeah. Like, especially online, there are just moments where you're just like, this does not seem right. I'm getting caught on things I shouldn't be getting caught on. Like, it just has, it has moments where, like, with the game where you're being competitive and you're platforming, if there are times where you feel like you get screwed by things outside of your control or your opponent's control... That's just frustrating, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's no fun in that. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's, a, I mean, that's, a, that's the, that is the problem. Like, it's, it's at fifteen. I think it's like fifteen bucks, right? Yeah, I think that's in the US. In the UK, it's like twelve pounds. There was they had a yeah. pre-order sale on. Yeah, I got the, I got, I got it on pre-order, so I got it for like twelve bucks or something. Yep, same. But, but it's like, a thing that did annoy me too is that like, if you look like, you would think, okay, I mean, sort of the understanding with like light ports or ports that come down the line is like, oh, the DLC will be included, right? Uh, sort of is like the way that you sort of view these things. We're like, okay, that's we're re- you're rebuying the game, but you're getting all the stuff included. Uh, with the game right now, there's like another $15 in DLC that includes like a, a second campaign mode that they added in the Wii U version later down the line and a bunch of like... On the Switch's icon, there are cost like half the costumes yeah, you see on the Switch's the DLC icon system. are DLC costumes, and you're like, that doesn't seem right. That seems I don't, that's yeah. that's upsetting, kind of. Yeah, and it's like uh, it's weird because like the most interesting costumes are like the third party uh, characters they have added to this game. So it's it yes. feels like a waste. It's one of those indie games where every where it feels like just. All the indie devs call all the other indie devs and we're like, can we put Shantae in this game? Can we put Hyperlight Drifter in this game? Yeah. Mighty Gunvolt? Just everyone, just put them in as a skin because it uses the same basic model, so just go wild with it. Uh, which is fun. Yeah, it's fun. And it kind of renders the DLC costumes kind of useless because they're much better designed. Yeah, I would not want any of those design. DLC costumes. Uh, like, if they made, like, characters as DLC costumes, but it's all costumes just for, like, the generic... Uh, main, like main people in the game. Yeah, and yeah, I never want to play as them. There was a cool monk one that I wanted that's DLC, and that made me sad. And there's also like music and stuff in the DLC, which is kind of disappointing. But mm. I mean, the music's not incredible. It's like fine. Yeah. Either way, in the in the main game, the only one. But yeah, I mean, sorry, the only DLC that's worth it is no. Satoru goes to space. That seems like an interesting yeah. one. Wait, sorry, go. On. I mean, it's like yeah. that's the second campaign, mm-hmm. and that's like and that's like seven dollars, yeah. I think. So, I mean, it's like half the cost of the full game. So, hopefully, I mean, I don't, I've not played it. Hopefully, it is worth the cost of asking half the, you know, half the asking price of the original game. But that is run, Bo. Yeah. The one other uh, thing that transition. I is, like, they haven't actually fixed I met all the bugs in that game no. before launch. Like, for example. I mean, they're, they've added them on, is the thing. Yeah. There are more than there were before. Like, like the uh, controller recognition. Like, I always find it annoying that it's, like, they have to go to like the fucking Wii U, not the Switch main menu. It was like just hit I and R to recognize that as your main controller, despite the fact that you've already entered it with the controller of your choice. They have to be reminded of that again. Like that could be worked on a little bit. Well, I mean, they do that because you're because you have 
anytime you enter the mode, you can have in add in as many people as you want as the thing. So they do that mode to let anyone else join in for the multiplayer. Mm. But like, I mean, it's the thing where it's like it's a good game that is that is has a not great port is sort of the problem, right? So like, yeah, that's a bit. I don't. That's I mean, the only issue with that, yeah. But yeah, but uh, I guess another game that we that we that we've been playing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, is also a thing where there are levels with lines and colors. That's the most of a c- second way I can think of. The Splatoon 2 Octo <laughs> expansion, baby! <laughs> this came out, this got shadow dropped at E3. It was part <laughs> of the World Championships. I was very well, excited, because they said summer. And we well, said, no, it was gonna, the summer gonna release gonna be date was July 13th. Which... No, no, no. No, they shadow no, dropped it. No, I'm summer pretty sure it was July... Th- yeah. Oh, was, they moved it up, you're... I think they did summer and then they changed it to they did July thirteenth. Yeah, it was they July thirteenth, which was and they stressing did me that. out because I was like, which oh, is no, funny. Octo expansion and Octopath Traveler on the same day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they both have Octo in the name. How can I search them on the Switch store? Who knows? But uh, we got Shadow Drop to E three, baby. This game, this thing is substantial. This is twenty dollars. People complain. They said Splatoon has had free DLC for so long. Why are they charging for it now? Uh, which I never got the complaint of. It's like, oh no, we've had a really nice thing for a long time, and now they're asking us for money. It feels like, in my mindset, you would be yeah. more accepting of DLC at that point, right? Because you've been given so, you've been given, you know, they've doubled the stage roster in that game for no charge, you know. Uh, they've added a bunch of new weapons and stuff. But uh, Octo Expansion in of itself is a single player expansion. The the guy, uh, one of the head designers for the game, the one American dude, said that it would make all other first-person shooter campaigns besides Vanquish weep on Twitter besides months before Vanquish. that game came out. Uh, I don't know. I don't, besides Vanquish, he, he had to make sure. He was like, we don't want to upset you. <laughs> He'll yell at me on Twitter. Uh, but uh, I don't know if it quite hit that high, but how do we feel about Splatoon 2 Octo expansion? It's a pretty fun game. It's quite. It's certainly challenging. Like I, I remember playing the first three levels, and it is already more challenging than the first three zones of the single player game of Splatoon Two. Yes, I was gonna. This was like sort of my main thought on the game, uh, on the expansion, on the whole. Is uh, like I, it feels like a thing that had to come out a year after Splatoon Two came out for for a bunch of different reasons. It because people sort of said. Eh, this feels like what I wanted the Splatoon 2 campaign to be. And it's like, sure, maybe, but also, like, I think if this was the main yeah, campaign for the game, people difficult. would, like, be frustrated at the difficulty, right? Like, he would feel like you're getting thrown into the into the deep end. Mm. Uh, but also, it's because it, like, leverages a lot of the unique things that have been added in the game since launch that that I really like about it. Like, there is 80 levels in this thing, uh, and there, there are sort of some repeated I- ideas for gimmicks, right? Like there's one where you have to shoot an eight ball because it's Octo eight, get it? Mm-hmm. Uh, to like to like different goals and stuff, and that's one that they use several times. But besides like three or four repeated ideas, almost every single level is a new, unique application of the Splatoon two gameplay, right? You're not doing anything in the game that you're not doing normally, but instead of it being the context of a shooter and you know a level based arena shooter it is uh platforming and it is puzzle solving and it's it's a bunch of different things that are all unique and cool and interesting and i mean this analogy got made a lot back when the first platoon two, uh, one came out but this feels octo expansion feels very much like a mario galaxy 2 to splatoon 1's mario galaxy 1 you know where like it uses a lot of the same core ideas but it ju- it's just bursting forth with so many different ways to spin those core ideas into unique, interesting ways oh. that is really interesting and cool. I was about to compare it to 3D Land. Like, the first time you play 3D Land, it's just, like, so many creative ideas just jam-packed into one single game. And there's, like, they rarely use the same idea twice, but if they do, they just it, cre- change it up so much that it feels Seth, unique Well, well I agree with you. You're, you're talking to Will about 3D Land. Yeah. You don't want to get him going. <laughs> Listen, here we go. I'm fine. 3D Land. <laughs> I mean, it, it does have like a 3D Land to 3D World feeling too a little bit. But like, I, I get where you're coming from. One thing I want to touch on with this game. And Brandon, you know, you're yes. you you're a man who can appreciate the hip hop. 
Th this game has like a hip hop aesthetic to it. It's very strange to have a Nintendo game be like, like, like. I mean, Pearl and Marina are Biggie and Tupac. <laughs> like the whole vibe and soundtrack and like general aesthetic of Octo Expansion feels like very removed from Splatoon, yeah. Splatoon Two, but like very much like it fits in the world. Why is this gangster like, rap in my children's Splatoon game? Because it's awesome, but like, but like that's the, I mean that's what my question, Brandon, is like is like how do you think that like yeah because the word this platoon uses a lot is fresh, right? And like I think that it actually applies very well. What do you think it is about Splatoon, especially Splatoon Two, and with the Octo expansion, where like they thread um, that line of not I mean, being lame? They picked probably like the best era of hip hop to represent with the style because uh, it's like late eighties, early nineties hip hop. Um, aesthetic that they went with and you yes. know I think that's that's just like a style of hip hop that's held up very well over time and that it just looks really nice even today like it this, like the style never really grew out it's almost like everything builds off of that style even like now when you see you know you can compare 2000s hip hop to 2010 sure. hip hop and uh, you know it's very different but like the base of it really comes from like 80s 90s hip hop and uh, it's just it looks really nice yeah. yes yes they they it play was, off that core base yeah. yeah also it helps the fact that like the original game as well they kind of started that whereas like they were hinting towards or like they were taking some levels of influence from hip hop uh, culture uh, and they've kind of like taken that on forward with Splatoon 2 and with this expansion yeah. pack, all they've just done was lean further into it. And given the type of setting that they've already established with the first two games, it fits much better. And it doesn't feel like like a creepy, uh, weird little tack on or like some kind of lame attempt. It was like, yo, look at us. We're trying to be on uh, yeah. hip hop. You know, We're going to be hip. Yeah. What's How up? How do you do, fellow yeah, kids? Like uh, yeah. Not very on the door. I mean, like, sort of yeah, because like, <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> yeah. Which it could very easily be, you know, like, especially with a company like Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think even, like, Splatoon 1 sort of had, like, a Nick Guts feel to it, you know, like, a little bit of, like, like, Nickelodeon, like, kids thing. Splatoon 2, I think, like, smoothly, it, like, started, it, like, got to where Splatoon 1 was getting them there, and, like, this is the full completion. It also has a little bit of a, like, a punk rock to it, too. If you look at some characters, like, um, you know, like, the, the, the guy who's, the urchin guy, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Spike, Spike, yeah. Some of the characters have a punk rock feel, and even some of the music tracks too. It's like, it it's like a mixture of hip hop and, and punk. It is also strange that there is like a trap song in a Nintendo game. Yeah. Like there was like there was one where I was playing. Oh, it was it was the Splatoon two. It was a remix from Splatoon in Smash that they posted on the Smash website the other week. And I listened to it. I was like, this is a trap song. What's happening? What are we doing? Like <laughs> this isn't a Smash Brothers game. I, it, I, I like. I think that Splatoon is as a, Splatoon is one was a very important game for Nintendo because it was a big success at a time where they didn't have a lot of them, you know. But like one, I think of I think one of the biggest parts of why it was it felt it feels like a big breath of fresh air within that company is because like it it feels modern. It feels like it's like it's a a series that is aware of the year that it's coming out in, and like it's good to have both timeless things and things that like are feel like they are modern you know like yet mario is going to look like mario to the end of time right mario is never going to be grungy mario is never going to be dressed like biggie smalls that that would be incredible <laughs> but like <laughs> splatoon you can pull that off you can have that moment where you're like oh man this is so weird but like also i'm cool with it and uh i don't want to spoil too much but the final level of octo expansion keep an eye out it's a treat i love it very much it does a thing that i love in video games a whole lot sweet where where it recontextualizes something that you're very familiar with in a very cool way. Uh, but that is exciting. It, well, everything you said about it is true in terms of, you know, all the stuff that it does and how it builds upon all the ideas. Um, but honestly, I was a little bit let down. I guess I expected more. And it's crazy. There's 80 levels, right? And, and I haven't even completed them all. But I've completed definitely like two thirds. There's a lot, of them. yeah. And you know, and then I beat the beat it, and it's just still felt short to me. 
it still felt like it went by very quick. Seriously? Not that the not that it was not fun. I had a lot of fun. Mm. It, well, I also was frustrated a couple of times, but it was a good challenge. It was a good balance challenge. Um, but it still felt short. It was cr- it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, maybe I was blowing through the levels faster than expected. But I don't know. It's weird. I mean, because like I probably yeah. took like. Because I hundred percent in it, like, and I and, and so I think I probably end up with like eight or nine hours, which I mean I guess you could say is for a campaign maybe short, but I think for like a shooter campaign, it's probably better to not overstay its welcome in some ways. But yeah. I mean, I get like I mean twenty dollars is maybe kind of a high asking price for what it is, but I was satisfied with it, so I don't know. Like it's it's one of those weird things where like because it is a DLC, it's probably not going to drop in price like anytime soon. Is is the weird thing about I have it? Not experienced that feeling whatsoever. Like, I feel it's still, like, it's... Personally, I feel still like it's reasonably, reasonably priced for what you're getting in regards to the, the type of DLC you're getting. Like, 80 levels, like, pure gameplay that you're uh, going through, and a lot of uh, cool, cool new additions, like getting all plans as your main yeah. characters, getting some cool ass designer gear and shit. Like, I feel as though, like, it's been worth the money to me. I haven't actually felt like... I didn't feel as though, like, I've been left it what's that word unsatisfied or like feeling so like there needs to be something more granted i haven't actually beaten the game yet so maybe my mind will change but after, so far so far it feels like worth the money i did like how they added a whole scenario to the game that was fun i thought that was great right like that is that you're not just like here's 80 levels that just exist from a menu but like there's a story there's things happening there is an almost mega man like sort of vibe to when that game gets towards the end point uh where you're sort of like picking branching paths to get to these sort of end points which is cool uh but you know i, I get where brandon's coming from of yeah. course and everything is not universal with these types of experiences but brandon you mentioned a game uh before uh, or you, you mentioned before when a game is like hey what's up my fellow kids <laughs> And a game that got that reputation early on because of a specific use of the word yeah. hella. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Life is Strange <laughs> came out. But uh, that ga- that ended up being pretty good. Life is Strange Season 1. Life is Strange Season 2 is on the horizon. But yeah. they also did another little side I, I side story yeah. prequel, I think is the word for it, probably. Well, so, I mean, we talked about it, I think, last week or the week before with... Um, you know, E3 and how they did the uh, Captain Spirit yes. free download, um, which was it's like a sequel yeah. prequel. Uh, it's a pre sequel to the, the second game. Um, and that got, you know, I downloaded it and was like, yeah, I, I got to I got to give this a, give this a play. And you know, I was like, oh, before I play this, though. I should probably play uh, Before the Storm, which I downloaded the season pass for and still haven't played. <laughs> well, that's fair. <laughs> so I said, oh, well, let me play this. Uh, so that's what I've been playing over the last couple of days. I'm almost at the end of episode two. There's only there's three episodes. And then, you know, for for uh, be, Before the Storm. And then there's also if you got the deluxe edition, there's a bonus episode um, that takes place before Before the Storm. God. Wow. So you get to play as Max one more time as uh, very young Max hanging out with Chloe. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I guess that's worth men- mentioning then because you mentioned Max. That in the first Life is Strange season, you play as Max and you are interfacing with, with Chloe, right? So you, yeah. are, you are Max who's a, you have an estranged friend you haven't seen for a long time named Chloe. You meet back up. Max discovers she has these time travel powers and through that, the story sort of unveils itself this is before that there is no powers and you're playing as chloe no max either. so no max she no max she's not there no. besides that bonus episode yes. you said so does which so like and it also wasn't made by the the core team that made the first game it wasn't made by the people that don't nod so well, when i first heard that stuff i was like ah man like as the person who liked the first one like i hope that this turns out to be okay do you think that like they've done a good job making a story that still feels important and substantial, r- removing all those sort of things that might you might consider signature to Life is Strange? Uh, I do. I think so far, you know, um, you know, two thirds done with it, pretty much, and mm-hmm. so far it's it's very good. They stayed true to the overall style of the game. 
Um, obviously, there's no time traveling powers because you're not Max. Uh, you you play as Chloe. The so the mechanic that they added in this one is it, Chloe's ability to argue her way out of any situation, and mm-hmm. you know you get these uh, chances every once in a while to to argue with somebody, and if you choose to. Uh, you have to, you know, it gives you different choices and you have to counter argue and you'll have a little bar on the bottom of the screen. Each time you get one correct, you'll fill it up. And each time you get one wrong, the, you know, your opponent gets one and, you know, you obviously, you gotta, you gotta fill your bar up before they do. And if you do, you end up winning the argument and you build your super meter and then you do a argument yeah. super. That just knocks them on their ass. They just can't handle it's how right. It's a cool little are. mechanic that it's not really, it's not as engaging or interesting as time travel. That's for sure. But you know, it, it yeah. has, you got to have something, you know, to fill in the gap there. Uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds more like a gameplay application than like a story application, yeah. right? Because like the time travel was integral to the story of yeah. Life is Strange one but like with this one like i don't think anyone ever mentions in the game oh no you filled up my argument bar. yeah ah, yeah like no, i don't imagine that happens it just sort of like it represents what chloe is best yeah. at right which i think is neat that's a i like that they're leveraging what she brings to the table because yeah. you're playing and, i mean obviously in the to me the the biggest draw of this game is in in the second game you're searching for chloe's missing friend um basically through That's, I guess, the main overall arching goal of the game is there's this girl who was the most popular girl at school, became really good friends with Chloe while Max was gone. Uh, And, you know, her name is Rachel Amber. And it's really cool because the whole game, she's gone. You don't you don't don't get to see her in uh, Life is Strange because you're searching for her. And it's really cool to be able to see that dynamic. Uh, between Chloe and, and Rachel Amber and to see how they became best, best friends, how, you know, exactly why everybody loved her. All, you know, you you only get, it was like a myth, right? You never get to really, in you know, interact or see why everybody loved Rachel. And to actually see this in this prequel is is super cool. I think that's my favorite thing about this. That is cool. So it's a, it's an actual, like, filling in of gaps that you care yes. about with the story, not just like... Yeah, it okay, fills in all cool. the gaps and it even... You know, you see things and you go, oh, okay, now I finally get to see, you know, Chloe got expelled um, from school. But, you you, you know, you, you never really get into a ton of detail about why. But this, you know, you get to see the entire thing play out. And it's really awesome. Oh, that's cool. I, I enjoy it. I'm really enjoying it. And they even think in the credits yeah. at the end of the episodes, you know, they think don't nod and say, you know, uh, thanks for letting us work in this universe. You know, it was a joy. Yeah. I think I think it's neat how Don't Nod has like ran like they they use the momentum of Life is Strange one you know like they didn't just go like oh wow this blew up way bigger than we thought it would let's just wait three years and put out another game they're like no let's like leverage this let's like let another team do this sort of prequel story while we're working on the second game let's do this side story with with Captain Spirit like let's let's use the momentum that we have in like fun interesting ways that aren't just like making a direct mm-hmm. sequel immediately yeah, after and, I think that's cool. and it gives them time yeah the the filling in the universe it's the life is strange was. universe mm-hmm. look forward to it yeah, well that's the new what Marvel they even say too universe. right in the in, for the captain spirit thing they're like it's yeah. it's a game t- takes place in the life is strange universe <laughs> yes that is that is like they have they have a they have a yeah. universe in mind for this series and that's pretty crazy not a, a whole lot of video game people say that uh, especially like a, a relatively small yeah. indie style game uh, so that's exciting uh speaking of that speaking of games that are relatively small but like have have more to it than i expected uh i've been playing a video game on my nintendo switch uh I've been playing East oh. 8, which uh, if you listen to the game club, you know that we played East 1, and I've gone <laughs> all the way to East 8. Uh, Did you play any of the so, games between? <laughs> well, well, I asked someone that, that I know that plays a lot of East, and they said, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, that, that, there will, that there will be moments, uh, I've, I'm pretty far in the game now, I'm probably like two-thirds of the way through, I would take a guess. Um, 
there are there are moments where because spoilers i mean i guess i should say this uh you play as adol christian who is the uh first you play as him in the first game you play as him still now uh one of the dlc armors that comes with the switch version is his armor from the original game so i was like hey i know the silver armor i I was on the game club that week uh but uh this one especially they said is is pretty fully self-contained uh and the reason why is because i was i was interested in isay even before he played the first one because it has a lot of stuff that i like in stories first and foremost it's the deserted island story and i love those i just love I love islands and I love pirate stories and I love ones where you're just like castaways trying to make your way home. I think that it's a fun little, you know, just a bottle episode where everything, you know, uh, it's all very self-contained. You don't need a lot of backstory. You can just tell a story there and not have to worry about uh, all the all the baggage that comes with the previous things that happened in all these characters' lives. Um, and two... Uh, it's all about building up a village. That's the whole thing, is that, like, you're on this boat, the boat gets crashed because there's this mysterious island. If anyone gets near it, they 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 end up shipwrecked or they end up dying. Uh, hard to believe that happens to your boat, too. And you're just trying to find all these castaways and build up this core village so you can get figure out a way to get home. And spoilers, there's other things going on in this island. Who knows? Uh, and so things that i really love about this game a lot of nippon ishi software games like trails in the sky do a lot of good work with npcs just every single time an event happens in uh the game all the people in the village will have something different to say they'll all have their own little like it was always too much but it's just a little perspective on what's happened you know like say a person goes missing like every single person will have a perspective on the person that just went missing and how they think we you should get them back you know like things like that when you do side quests like sometimes there's an appreciable visual difference in what you in in the place that you stay at right like one of them is literally just one of the girls being like hey the girls room that we don't have curtains like where the girls sleep we don't have curtains and it's a little weird because we worry about people seeing us change and so your whole mission is just to get curtains for them right and like but like when you finish there are curtains there and you're like yes good like when you improve the hospital area the med bay because you have a doctor there you see it physically get better and soon you're looking at this village that had nothing there soon be filled out and have all this stuff going on and that is uh it's just satisfying to look at a video game have that type of progression and also there's dinosaurs and i like dinosaurs a lot Mm. and i like fighting the dinosaurs in the video game uh so if you if you want to uh, a nice little rpg i know that octopath is coming down the pike on switch but if you're on a ps4 if you if you just have a ps4 it's on ps4 it's on vita it's on pc uh, there are many ways to play this game and it's, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's not like it's the triple a high budget, you know, so the game is not insane graphics, but it is, uh, if any of the stuff that I mentioned sounds like a fun idea, fun little Island adventure, check it out. It's cool. I do want to play it, but I am torn on whether or not I'd rather play it on switch or PS4. Um, I've, I've seen them mm-hmm. both run next to each other and the PS4 version looks better. Yeah. I will say it was nice. There is something to an RPG on Switch that is nice because, like, for example, uh, my room, uh, we had some people over, so that so my room was getting used by those people over the over the weekend, uh, over the week. Sorry for for July Fourth, and uh, I was like, well, that's fine, you know, like they were, they were they were doing something on my TV, uh, and so I just like pulled out my Switch, went into the couch where I was sleeping, and just like mm. grinded for an hour or two late at night when I couldn't fall asleep. And there was like there was something that was just nice about that. It just about you know sort of like kicking back, listening to a podcast, and just playing you know on a couch. Uh, that is nice, but I mean, the one benefit to the PS4 version is that it gets discounted more regularly now because it's an older release. Um, and both of them, I don't. The the one thing that is crazy about this game is I don't know if you you may have seen these headlines at launch. The the translation when it came out was bad. It was not good. There were parts where it just wasn't translated, so a character would just randomly speak, ja- like you would see Japanese characters in the middle of their text bubble, and you're like, this seems wrong. Uh, and just like weird phrases that people wouldn't say naturally. They commissioned a full retranslation of this game, uh, and they read it a bunch of voice acting for it too, and so all that is com- comes with the Switch when you download the patches. But I think that's like, kind. I don't know another time that a game's just redone the entire script after launch it's pretty wild <laughs> or, or i i think it's pretty darn near full uh, retranslation but that's 
that's interesting. Uh, so it's hard to like see the the places where they could have screwed it up, but I'm sure they did. Uh, but it's fixed now, which is nice. Uh, but I guess one last game we want to get to on this before we get to you know the the L word, the one we don't want to don't speak its don't speak its name until we're ready for it. <laughs> uh, Brandon and and Saf, both of you have been playing a game that is known for its story, yeah. uh, near yeah. Automata. So. I played this last year. It's it's been it's been I just about a year now since I played it. Uh, where are you both at? Just for people that have played, people that don't want to play, uh, they don't quite know where you are in the story. But how far are both of you in the I'm game? I'm sure right staff's now? further than me because I got distracted by Life is Strange because mm-hmm. uh, I started playing the game and then I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to play something else to so I'm not just getting worn out on one game. <laughs> so also i wanted mm-hmm. achievements so That's fine. <laughs> i mean i was getting it achie- also <laughs> sidetrack here for one second i re i re i bought near on the xbox That's one. fine yeah. yes yes just recently I released I that version ps4 but you know i i wanted to buy it again just to get the achievements that's besides the point um you know i i so i was playing here <laughs> And then I was like, I want to play, I want to play Captain uh, Spirit game. And then I was like, oh no, I should probably play this other game first. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh shit, I'm not playing here now. But I did, I did get to. Uh, I fought the naked dude. I fought the naked dude. Oh yeah. So you okay, know, I, I fought right. that dude. Okay. I beat his ass. Well, you know, spoilers. I mean, there's naked a naked people. character in the game. Ha, sorry, bro. <laughs> no, the, he has know, no ding a lang. No, it's just he does not. If you're afraid of those and you don't want to see him, and you have kids in the room, don't worry. He has no ding a lang. He looks like a Ken doll. Put the kids to bed. He does. Well, I mean, you know, maybe that's part of it. And then Saf, where are you at? I am. Uh, yeah, I'm way further ahead than he is. Because I, okay. I'm way beyond the. Do, just guy. give what what percent of this of of the first playthrough do you think you're at? I have no fucking idea, man. I'm not even okay. Going to that's fun. That's fun. See, that's fun when you don't know how far you are in. Yeah. Currently, I've just witnessed a cave in. I'm just going to say just that. Uh, okay. But with that naked guy, you know that first game? And remember how we talked about it uh, last time when we put it on the list? And like yes. the perspective change? Mm-hmm. That perspective change fucked me so hard uh, mentally. Oh? Right, so it screw it it, it screw me mentally in regards to the fact that um, this naked guy was not going to fight me whatsoever. No, nope. at all. He was uh-huh. just standing there. Yeah, and the game was telling me to kill him. Yeah, but I had no reason to kill him. You had That's, no reason to, besides the game telling you. Why did he stop back? Too. And I was sitting there waiting because the other game. No, well, no, you, you know, okay, it. I know what you're you saying, because it. I actually the felt that game. same feeling when the robot started being like, ah, I'm afraid, ah, leave me alone, oh, no, like, they were acting, they were acting scared, but well, I was yeah. slaughtering the shit out of them. Yeah. So I felt that same, I felt the same. Yeah. yeah. No, I wasn't doing anything. I was avoiding that as much as possible, so much so that I spent 20 minutes not doing anything other than Sad just running around the circle <laughs> because I did not want to like because like the last game made you feel like a monster and I didn't want to be yeah you know, well, I mean, again, the thing like, is that is that you're a you're an android you you have to you have to obey commands right like yeah. that's the whole thing it's like to be is like she's she's the quintessential soldier you you listen to the chain of command I already you feel rebelled bad. against the chain of command the moment they tried oh. to let me set up my self destruct I refused. I refused, and they're like, "Okay, don't do the self-destruct sequence. Don't have it in your system." Like, well, I wanted to do it once I learned that her pants would fall. <laughs> oh, I yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, I was waiting for that comment the second he said self-destruct. I knew. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, I mean, so, w- so you guys still have a little bit of a way to go, but like you're 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 pretty far in. Like, so a lot of people talk about the story of the game, which is, I mean, the reason that Yoko Taro is known for that, but like. This is also a Platinum game. It was developed by Platinum. I, I don't think that it's probably at like the Bayonetta 2 caliber of like the intricacies of the battle system, but are you enjoying the general act of playing the video game? Yeah. Yeah. The movement is a lot of fun. Like, mm-hmm. there's some secret stuff in there that I had no idea that we could do in that game, which I had a lot of fun with. Like, yeah. 
Brandon top tip, you can toss fucking 2B. Like, you could chuck her across the world. if Well, not the world, but across a long distance, if you know what to do. You can toss 2B? What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, you can literally just use your pod to have her uh, jump, leap an extra mile. So now you have, like, four jumps, basically. Oh, you mean, like, she can grab onto it and it delays her fall? No, no. Like, you can jump, you can then do a double jump, then you can use your pod to throw 2B further, and then you could do a dash in midair to even go to go even further. Seth, so you're breaking. See, I've either I've forgotten this tech or you've discovered new tech that I didn't pick up on my way. But that's ex- that's a whole thing. Ooh. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. I've been having a lot of fun with that movement. Brandon's got the uh, the Xbox edition, so he he's got all that the Coliseum DLC. He can oh, do more yeah. hard and mode stuff. If you I was actually a little can... bit disappointed when I figured out that the uh, DLC um, costumes. We're not normal DLC costumes uh-huh. where you just, oh, hey, I got the DLC. Let me change my costume. You have to get the DLC yeah. costumes, which luckily I didn't have to because it was like the deluxe edition. But you have to unlock them after mm-hmm. you get them. Yeah, the, you have to like go to a specific yeah. place and do it. That's right. Dumb. With P- with paid DLC, it's kind of like, hmm. You know, if I'm going to pay for DLC and then I have to unlock it, it should have just been unlockable in the first place. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's weird because, like, the the outfits in that game, like, are used for a couple of, like, mm. story beats. So I get the idea that, like, oh, we don't want to, like, have that be a thing, like, for sort of, like, for second playthroughs or, like, once you've gotten sort of through a lot of the main story type deal. But, like, yeah. if you're paying for it, I get what you're saying. Like, it's it's weird that, like, you have to try to seek it out after you've it already spent weird. the it, I mean, I'm glad I didn't it. actually pay uh, for it because it's, like, the, the version that comes with it already. <laughs> but if I did pay for it, yeah. I'd be a little bit mad. Yeah. But I just wanted to play as the uh, the yeah. lingerie-looking outfit, but I couldn't. The one, well, that's the outfit from Near One. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's with the, the, titty, the titty windows and the... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there you are. Uh, let me know when you fight the Square Enix boss, by the way. The, the literal CEO of Square Enix is the literal CEO of Square Enix is a, is a boss in that game. He's the like level ninety nine boss. It's very good. Uh, uh, shit. Really? You can also fight him in Final Fantasy fifteen. They for some reason I don't know if people are mad at him among the dev team, but multiple Square Enix games let you now fight the CEO, which is pretty wild. <laughs> uh, it's very meta, but it's pretty cool. Uh, but that being said, those were you know what I mean. Like we talk a lot about the news on this podcast. Uh, it was good to just talk about some good video games that, like, if any of these interest you, you can figure out how to get to them. They're not hard to find. Hopefully, you can Google. Uh, but, yeah, just, like, the summer... The, the thing was that there used to be a dead time for video games, you know? There used to be a dead time for when stuff would come out. Uh, that doesn't really exist much anymore, you know? Like, even even the dead times, and putting that in quotation marks, you'll still have one or two yeah. good games a week that are worth your time. And that is clearly true of of this of this year as well it's it's the problem where there's no time to catch up on your backlog anymore besides just deciding i'm not gonna buy any well games. a little bit i mean i feel like i am a little bit in playing near and uh sure Life is strange but like storm. if you just have an xbox that's a new release you know like that's a new thing that's true that's true uh so that's that's exciting but uh it is now time we've we talked about a lot more recent games let's look a little bit further back on the list the list, the list. yeah so welcome to the list everyone this is in case you don't know a, a part of the podcast where every week one of us brings a game we discuss during that segment what we does where wh- we talk about the game and where we want to put it on the official ranking it's canon you cannot claim otherwise except for when we do uh cool. for the uh jump up supercast game list last week brandon brought a real treat of a video game uh that is uh, Sonic and the Secret Rings for the Nintendo Wii. It did poorly, is the way I would describe it, because it did just above the very last game, uh, which is another Sonic game. So it's number 35 on the list of 36. <laughs> uh, right, right above Sonic 2006. Uh, now, this week it comes around to me, to Will. What game are you oh, bringing boy. this time, Will? Well, I'm bringing a game that. I, I don't know what year it came out, but it's it, it's getting close to eight years old now. Uh, I'll bring Punch Out for the Nintendo Wii. Ooh. Oh, baby. Game. That's a good game. Yeah, my dude. Now, let me tell you about a little bit about it, for those of you who are unaware. This game is a... 
it's not really a remake, I would not say, but it is it is a sequel, I suppose, to to Punch Out and Super Punch Out. There was a very long break in between those in this game, right? Super Punch Out was on the Super Nintendo. Uh, and then we had a very long break until 2009 on the Wii when Punch-Out came out. Mm-hmm. It was made by Next Level Games, who did a bunch of Mario uh, games beforehand. Next and Mario Level Strikers. Games are so good. They're very good. They're very underrated among among the people. But uh, it is it uses a lot of... So if you don't know what Punch-Out is on its core level, it's a boxing game. But it's not a boxing game like uh, Fight Night or games like that. I would put it more akin to a... Uh, a puzzle game almost, right? Where every single person you come up against, they have certain tells, certain things they do, certain patterns. And it's all about the process of figuring out those patterns and applying your own counters to them, right? So there's a part of reaction. There was a, there's a part mentally dis- of discovery. There's a lot going on there at once. And it all combines, I think, to make an absolute uh, real joy of an experience uh, with this game. Yeah, there's uh, no, nothing really like it. Like, it's really unique. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's only been, like, what, two other games of Punch-Out that came out? Um, like... Well, if you want to count Punch-Out Arcade, then yeah, but... Yeah, mm. but, like, that wasn't easily accessible until, like, last year, which is cool, by the way. It's on the it's on the Switch if you ever That's want to true. try it. You can I can play it at my local arcade. <laughs> oh, what? Look at you. <laughs> Living the high life. Guess got it has fingertips at any time. But, uh... But also a thing that it did, praise the Lord, it redesigned Little Mac and saved us from the really bad old Little Mac design in Smash Brothers. <laughs> uh, it was so bad. It was really bad. Uh, now, guys, I really like Punch-Out, is the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would like to put it at number 12 on the list. 12. Hmm, so it's below Super Mario Brothers, but above Dragon Ball Fighters. Hmm. 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 That's um. Uh, that's pretty high praise. Yeah, I it's was. High I was looking at originally around number sixteen, but uh, maybe you can convince me to go higher. So I want. I want to make a couple of points that I think are important about that. Are, that are unique about Punch Out, because there's 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 a lot of people complaining. Well, it's using a lot of old characters, right? It's using. You're still fighting King Hippo. You're still fighting Piston Honda. You're still fighting all these people, uh, and that is fairly true. I I understand where you're coming from with that, but the fun thing is that because I know a lot of people that played the minor circuit mode that went they beat Mr. Dream and they said, "Oh, I did it! I did it! I beat the game!" and they put it away. You're actually only like a third of the way done is the f- fun thing about Punch-Out Wii. As soon as you get done with that uh, first, that's actually the minor circuit. Then you move up to the major circuit where every character, while still having sort of the same basic premise, has a completely whole g- new gimmick mm-hmm. to them, right? Starts from Glass Joe, who you fight again. He's got himself a head, uh, a, a head protector. That was his brilliant new move. <laughs> So now suddenly Glass Joe, the man with the glass jaw, you can't hit him in the head anymore. You have to actually relearn how, how to fight all these characters again. And sometimes the game plays off of your own ex- the things you already learned before to punish you, right? Mm-hmm. If you try to do the same things again, you're going to get your butt beat, you mm-hmm. know? I- but, but I think that having that whole thing again, there is a lot more game here than you would think. Uh, that is really and one of my favorite things in the game. One of one, I think, just a thing that I have not seen another video game do in such a cool, unique way. Because I played a lot of Punch Out Wii, right? Is that I went through Major, I went through Minor, I beat uh, the Mr. Jim again. I fought Donkey Kong, who is really, by the way, an incredible secret mm-hmm. boss, really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, they're like, "You unlocked a new mode, Max Last Stand," and I was like, "Oh, what is this? That's weird." And you go, and there's like a cutscene that plays, right? Because you because you have Little Mac and Doc Lewis, and they're the two characters. Uh, that you know, he's Doc is your coach, and he's like, and you just see Doc being like, "You want to hang it up, Mac?" Because Mac's the top of the world, right? He's, he has this thing, and so it's the game says like, "This is Little Mac's last stand. He's going to retire after this. Don't pick it unless you're ready for it to be over." Is like the way that it describes it. And so what you do is you start off and it's just, it's regular Glass Joe and you beat regular Glass Joe and then you beat and you just keep going. But then you start the next match and you notice, oh, my health didn't restart. My health didn't regen. 
And then you realize that this is a marathon. It is Little uh, Mac's last stand in the truest sense of the word. So you just go and you beat, if you beat through all of the minors, you go through the majors and you go through the, and you just, it will never stop, uh, right? It is, and you keep going until Little Mac gets knocked to the ground and someone else is the champion again, right? Because he does it and, and he, he's done. And it has this cutscene where it's like, they don't know, he's a legend of boxing. They don't know where he went. They, they, he's, he's, he's dropped off the face of the planet, but he will forever be known as the boxing legend Little Mac, mm-hmm. right? And, and you just see this like trophy case and Doc staring at it. And then you go back and it's like, you can't access this save file again. You did it. Mac's retired. That Little Mac is done. Wow. And I think... That is extremely cool. That is such a neat, like, genuine... I didn't expect, like, a gut punch from from Punch-Up, but I was like, wow, I'm genuinely impressed, and I want to, like, tell somebody about this. And I didn't think I would get that from a Punch-Out game. And so I think that, like, because it rose above and beyond while still having the core rock-solid fun gameplay of Punch-Out and and recontextualizing with Major League, I'm willing to put it where I want to on the list. That's pretty impressive. That's a really cool feature. Would you count the dark fight? Like the kind of like downloadable content, where it's like you fight your coach as part. Yeah. Of I mean, that was like yeah. that's like a separate thing, kind of maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> it's a separate thing, but like I think, I mean, I think that's cool, right? I think it's cool that like they leverage the Punch Out universe in a neat way. But I don't yeah. know if I would consider it part of this game. Yeah. I also really enjoy like every single character in that game is so funny and unique. It's like yeah. I love it. Yeah, they, they they're so expressive. Yeah, they stereotype those characters. Like they stereotype yeah. these characters, but they stereotype this in like weirdly positive ways, like kind of fun ways. Like it doesn't feel offensive. It kind of like seems funny and like unique. It doesn't feel like yeah, like it's trying to make fun like of. Like it's it or... like it's just like it's really dumb and goofy, right? Like it's not like it's like ever. You know, there's never like mean spiritedness to it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. is the thing. That's what I was looking like. For. Like when you punch glass, Joe. Like instead of star circling around his head when he's like struggling back up, it's baguettes. You know, <laughs> just like silly little things like that are fun. Yeah. And just like like even when you get knocked down, right? Like each of them has their own little animation where they're like taunting you while you're trying to get back up. This- and stuff like that is really fun and unique and like make gives the game a lot of character where it could not. You know. And there's one guy from Boxer who's from Canada, and he could not be any more stereotypically Canadian. It's like love rejection. Bear hugger. Bear okay, hugger. so yeah. I actually want to point out one of the <laughs> things. I mean, as much as I love these characters, are all great. There's actually something about this game that bothered mm-hmm. me when I first came out, and that was the fact that there wasn't mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. many new characters in the game. It, it, they did the exact same gimmicks for all these characters as well, didn't they? Yeah, it, that actually was a little bit disappointing to mm-hmm. me at, at the time because they took all the NES fighters minus. Mi- Mr. Dream and my, slash Mike Tyson. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think a couple from the Super NES game. And they added, like, what, like, I think one or two new characters. And, and that they was brought it. in, I think, three. The they dis- brought in there was three. a disco guy. Disco Stu. The disco kid. Oh, there's the Aaron kid. Ryan. And then there's one other one. Yeah. I forget. Well, it was just, to me, it was a little bit disappointing that there wasn't, like, a slew of new characters. It almost felt like a remake more than anything yeah it did feel I, like a remake of like the I, original but i, I would i that. would say that they added so much to those characters that like it's it's a, in many ways a wholly different fight you know sure. like i mean it's try the best fight i mean it's the best punch yeah. out game by far I, but I, yeah I, yeah no i was thinking the exact same thing but i was in two minds about it because on one hand you're absolutely right it is just basically taking up like a lot of the old stuff and just repackaging the new game but at the same time, yeah. it's been like 15 years, 20 years. Like, how well, old is yeah, that Yeah, but it was kind of like a thing where, oh, my God, they're finally making a new punch out. But it's like the same thing, you know? Mm-hmm. It- well, but I would say that they've added a lot to the like Aaron Ryan's whole gimmick with his like with his like gimmied, a gimmicked boxing glove where he has the like horseshoe in it. Right. <laughs> Like stuff like that, which is like one is just very good, good and dumb. Right. But like that wasn't there originally, right? Like a lot of these characters, like the stuff they add in, like they have some attacks that are that are repeated, right? Like sort of, it wouldn't feel like you're fighting King Hip- King Hippo if he didn't have the weak belly button, you know? Mm-hmm. But like I think that like Major Circuit, where King Hippo comes out with just a big man cover hole taped to his belly. Mm. <laughs> Like, and suddenly you're like, "Uh uh-oh, I can't punch his belly anymore because he's got a big manhole cover taped (laughs) to it. Like, I think that the major circuit sort of alleviates a lot of those problems because that's when the fights are wholly separate from what they used to be, you know? Like, in many ways, the minor circuit is sort of like a, it's a, it's a, 
like a lap to like remember everything, like a little bit of a nostalgia trip, but it's also sort of a tutorial for what's to come down the line, you know? Well, yeah, but you, and so I'm, would you I, ever I consider that. it being worth it, like going through the exact same shit before in order to get to the, like the remix stuff? Like, do you not yes, think it? Yes, I would because because it's been twenty years and there's a lot of people that are playing it for the first time. You know, like, I th- and I think that also, like, I think it's still fun to fight them. Like, it's not one to one. Like, you're still learning new things even in the minor circuit. Mm-hmm. But I I get where you're yeah. coming from. I, I always I hate because you guys always say so many good things and then I always there's no negatives right and I always have to be like okay I gotta be that guy. <laughs> you guys are saying all the good <laughs> things I agree with, but I got it, it can't be all fun and games or else it would be the number one game. So there's got to be a couple things that you know aren't perfect about this. There game. is no. yeah, there's a couple. And of another one too I get yeah. is the fact that the game didn't have a multiplayer feature for the time. No, it did. It didn't have like a versus mode. It did. No, did they? Yeah, it did. They did. I played versus mode with a friend. Like that's where Gigamac originated from. Yeah, that's where Gigamac comes from. You, you're that. both little Mac. Oh, you're both little Mac. Yeah, because I played it a bunch with my friend. Yeah, you're both little Mac, and you both you you have both have health, but as you're doing, you also build up meter using star punches, uh-huh. and that's when you go Gigamac, which is where they got him for Smash. I somehow I don't remember I just it being that great at all. It's not, I mean, it's not incredible, yeah. but like, it actually is weird that like, I thought that there, were, there was no fun in that. And then a friend of mine was like, look, cause I was playing Punch Out when he got, when he came over to my house and he was like, Hey, you want to do the versus mode in that? And I was like, sure. And we ended up playing for like three or four hours, which surprised me Yeah. because he had a lot of fun with it. So like, I mean, I guess someone had fun with it, which was <laughs> my friend, but I, yeah, it, it's, it was not like the main appeal of that game. Yeah. I, I yeah. understand that. I think that's like my only major. Comp- well, I don't know. Like, would you consider difficulty being a major criticism or a religion with criticism for this type of game? You think that it's really hard? I mean, it's going to be like a lot of trial and error, and it's going to. Yeah, I mean, the whole game is but about I- learning patterns yeah. and like learning how yeah. to defeat your opponents. So you can't really blame it for like it's difficult. Also, we know what we didn't talk about was the motion controls, but but. You could play without them, so I'm not gonna. So yeah, because I didn't really yeah. like them. They didn't, there was a weird mode. There with was the a balance, balance board. board. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. You use the balance board to dodge left and right. That didn't work well. And even the regular motion controls. Yeah. So no. Punch Out is a game that really needs precision, and that game it did does. not bode itself yeah. super well. Like you could get through the first couple fights fine, and it feels kind of cool. But when you need mm-hmm. that precision near the end of the game, you got to use just the button presses. Okay, yeah. so we got like a lot of shit about like what makes this game great. Now someone needs to convince me, that, or specifically you, will need to convince you why it's better than Dragon Ball Z Fighters. Okay. Uh, I mean, Dragon Ball Fighters is, is specifically is, is what we want to put up against. So That's what I, you I would say that, <laughs> Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm trying to think of the specific way to phrase it. So like, I would say first and foremost that it has... Um, like, I think that Punch-Out, I mean, like Noah sort of said at the start, it's wholly unique, right? Like, Dragon Ball is a, is a good execution of an Arxis fighting game, right? Mm-hmm. But it's building off that base. I think that it is, I guess if you look at it, ostensibly a boss, boss rush game, but it's unlike any other boss rush game that's out there. You know, like, there was just, I think, for a lot of fans in the gap between Super Punch-Out and regular Punch-Out, this gap of this type of game that doesn't really, that didn't really exist, you know? It didn't really have that going on to it and so i think that because it is wholly in this unique space in the gaming sphere because it executes it well and it's the best one of that wholly unique space uh i would put it above dragon ball fighters which is a game that is a very good game it's a good execution of of the type of game the arc system works makes but i wouldn't even know if it's if i would say it's the best one of their game and i think that punch out is it's, that's the it's thing. The like, of... I would say I'd prefer it over Dragon Ball Fighters, but I don't know if it's better than Shovel Knight: Cave Story of Valkyria Chronicles. Mm. Sure, and that I mean that is the issue with the list in general, right? <laughs> that's the list, though. You got to do have games it. Like, you gotta that's the list it. for you, you gotta baby. Make, you got to figure it out. You got to do it. For me, but... Dragon Ball Z Fighter, Dragon Ball Fighters seems like uh, a more complete game. To me, no. I mean, Dragon Ball has like it has it has a dearth of modes to it. I would say at times, like the online functionality is strange, oh, yeah, and it takes more load, effort load than it should to connect. Yeah. Right, like just like the fact that 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 even when the servers were working well, it took us about fifteen minutes to get into like a group and play. I think is an issue. 
that like should not be overlooked with a game that has that lives by its online versus you know like with punch out it is a primarily single focus experience and like while there is the issues of, of repeated characters and re- and some you know same elements and devices the old games i think that from beginning to end there's very rarely a moment in punch out where you feel like you got cheated you know like there are moments where like this is so hard but it never like feels like you got robbed you know and i think that that's so uh net code I mean, when just yeah, net code would be completely un- unworkable and i would like you're not getting robbed when i think of getting robbed i mean that's well but i mean like net code's part of the game like that's part of a fighter and like there are times also where like i mean what i would say is that punch out just works right like it's one of the games that is beautiful in its simplicity of design like it doesn't it's not overly big it's not overly bloated but i think the fact that it's not overly big and not overly bloated makes it such they were able to be so like intricate with like the animations like you said right with like the the patterns of these moves they're able to be able to to make them as good as they are because they don't overextend themselves it's a it's a rare instance of them being minimalist in a game design in a way that helps the game you know Hmm. Again, you've convinced me that it's better than Dragon Ball. It was just uh, not better than Valkyria Chronicles Cave Story or Shovel Knight. <laughs> this is where it gets harder. I would say, I mean, I can't. I don't know if I want to go one by one. We're getting a little long in the podcast. Yeah. Here. But I think I think that's sort of. I sort of said my piece on why I like it. Mm. What right. about you guys, Seth, Seth Brandon? What do you think? You know, I think number twelve is a pretty decent spot for it. Um, I really love this game. I've always been a huge Punch Out fan from the moment I first played it. Funny story, I first played it on Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, you know, the original Punch Out, oh, I baby. first played it on Animal Crossing. And God, what yeah, I. Yeah, dude, that that's really I good. Played it. I was like, oh no. I just, I was, I, a whole day was spent just trying to beat that game. And it, it was a blast, man. I love <laughs> Punch Out. Ever since I don't really like Super Punch Out, not really a big fan of that game. So Little Mac looks like an idiot in that game. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> the Punch Out for me is really a love letter to the series. Um, I wish it did more. I wish it felt like a true sequel instead of a remake. I'd still like to see a true sequel one day. Um, but yeah, man, it's just the game is great. The animation, uh, the characters. Uh, it's fun. It's fast. It's you know arc- arcade style, but man, it's like a puzzle arcade game. It's so fun to play. the The graphics are just look even nice today on the Wii. We didn't, I don't even think we mentioned that. And the music, oh, the music is also incredible. So I think it deserves oh, a to treat. be yeah. there. Uh, honestly, I I feel like I'd probably rather play Punch Out than Dragon Ball Fighters. So Dragon Ball Fighters is good, but boy, do I suck at fighting games. So, for personally, for me, I think I'd put it above Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. I'd stop at Mario Brothers, though. Stop at I Mario Brothers. Dragon Ball Fighters for fault. Uh, All right, Seth. You're shit. Okay. I, can't, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, I don't like I said, that guy, I'd be willing to go with... that high if need be, but... No, but I agree with Noah, because I feel so there are other games that... Uh, I feel are superior to Punch Out or like deserve to be in a higher position than Punch Out is. Like uh, Shovel Knight, Cave Story, Valkyria, Chronos are all games I would uh, play over Punch Out or I would recommend over Punch Out in regards to the type of game it is. Like they both, they they all come in the same kind of like uh, rating range. If I were to rate them, like they would be within the same range. But I would like if you were to. Tell me to choose someone to rec- some game to recommend. Um, I would always list one of those other games like Dragon Ball Fighters or Shovel Knight or Cave Story or Wakita Cronus above Punch Out. Like it was, it's an easy choice for me to just go for either of those games rather than uh, Punch Out. So, all right, uh, fair question. Where do you stop recommending a game before Punch Out? Um. Uh, so I'll put a. So mine would be underneath Valkyrie Chronicles, above Animal Crossing. So Animal Crossing, you would recommend Punch Out over Animal Crossing? Yeah. Okay. That's. <laughs> I hate to be that. That's guy, the exact but... same spot where I said so. <laughs> uh, it's like, 
Well, because I, I could be the, the ghost, I'll be the, guy. the ghost of. Should we move a little the, closer the, the, towards the middle since we're two and two? Sure, we could do that. I'm willing to put it ab above Cave Story. Is that all right? Sure. Yeah, you're take, knocking yeah, it down uh, too. Uh, Shovel Knight is very good. Yeah. Um, Shovel Knight's very good, but I would put it above Cave Story. Rare, I, think. I would still put it above Cave. A story. rare case of the uh, right. uh, compromise here going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. So there it is. Punch out Wii for the Nintendo Wii. Uh, moves us in here so we can say Nintendo Wii. Uh, <laughs> in at, number, <laughs> at number 14 on the list. Make sure it has two exclamation points when you put it on the list, please. This is important. That's how you yeah. know it's Rem the second one. The one on the Wii. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, there we go. Let's, let's do the surrounding around it. Uh, so that puts it number 12, Dragon Ball Fighters. Number 13, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Number 14, Punch Out with two exclamation marks because it's for the Nintendo Wii. 15, Cave Story, 16, Valkyria Chronicles, Remastered. That is the list for this week. That is the podcast for this week. We want to thank you all for listening. Brandon, will you? would you like to give us what else? Tell the people what else we do out there. I'd love to. Uh, we do a lot of things. Uh, we're we're just a great little uh, umbrella. That will, will you like to use the term umbrella. The umbrella of do. the Jump Up Supercast title. Uh, we do a bunch of stuff. We're on all sorts of social media. We're, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. We're all around the internet. Um, you can even find us once in a while streaming on Twitch. We play video games there. Um, we sometimes play whatever we feel like. And we also sometimes play the Game Club game. Which is our second show. Mm -hmm. The we mentioned it earlier in the podcast. It's called the Jump Up Supercast Game Club. I host it every two weeks. Uh, we play uh, a, a game that one of us chooses. We get two weeks to play it. We come together. We talk about how we felt about the game, and then we put it on the list. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep up on the list, man. It's super important. It's also canon. So if anybody at school is arguing with you and says, "You know what, man? I gotta say." The Stardew Valley is a great game. And you say, you know what? I think it is, but I think Super Mario 3D Land is better. And your friend goes, no, right. no, no, dude. And you go, oh, you whip out the it. list. And you say, listen, this. the Jump Up Supercast, they put it they put it above Stardew Valley on the list. That's canon, my dude. <laughs> you lost. Now I'm going to go get an I'm, A. I'm, I'm going to go study and get an A. Again. And I'm going to drink water and hydrate because I'm a good kid and I'm a good student. And I'm always right because I listen to the Jump Up Supercast, boy. And then, that's so you gotta <laughs> you gotta keep up on that. All right, do us all a favor. Uh, also follow us on Twitter. Make sure you do because when we go live on Twitch, uh, we always tweet to let you know we're live. We also tweet the episodes when they go up. So that's you know, and mm -hmm. you know what? Slide into our DMs and Will will say hi. But that's probably all he'll say. I don't well, know I don't if know I will. You. I actually manage it. I might. You probably, probably Brandon. You probably, probably Brandon. Be, and I'll pretend to be Will. But make sure you do uh, all that stuff, please. Yeah. Uh, but thank you, Brandon, for well, those plugs. This is, you know, and, and for the for the for the sign off for the thing that we gotta make sure to remind everyone. You mentioned it earlier, Brandon. It's hot outside, everybody. Play games, work hard, play hard. But most importantly, bring yourself a bottle of water. Stay hydrated out there. We want you sticking around for the next week's podcast and that we love you.